Hi, I'm Monta Bryant. Welcome to Module 3 of the Baby Sign Language Basics online learning series. Today we're going to be learning signs for bath time, and we're also going to be learning about sign approximations and offering suggestions on how to respond to those. In the early stages of signing with your baby, you'll probably notice your baby doing some things with their hands that don't really look random, but also don't look like any of the signs you've been using with your baby. Or, you might notice them doing things with their hands that do look similar to the signs you've been teaching them, but they don't seem to be done in any particular context. Today we're going to be discussing some reasons for this and offering suggestions on how to respond. The following are some ways that babies may change or approximate signs. They may at first do some hand babbling where they're just experimenting with what they can do with their hands. This is similar to what they do before they start talking with their voice, making sounds like ga ga ga, ba ba ba. They may change a one-handed sign into a two-handed sign, doing milk like this, for example, instead of like this. Or they may do the opposite and change a two-handed sign into a one-handed sign. Instead of signing music like this, they may just drop that hand and sign it like this. And they may um, simplify a sign. For example, cow is done like this. They may drop out the hand shape and just do it like this or like this. And they may just try to use the same sign for everything. They like to use that milk sign and they wonder if they can just use that as an all-purpose sign. Or they might do that with the more sign. First, let's talk a little bit about hand babbling. Hand babbling is actually the signing version of baby talk. In the same way that your baby will experiment with the sounds they can make with their voice, da da da, ba ba ba, goo goo goo, um, they'll also experiment with the different things they can do with their hands. And this is natural because they see you moving your hands as you talk, as you're signing, or just doing normal gesturing with your speech, so they want to try it too. So a good way to respond when you see your baby hand babbling is just to say, very good, I see you're signing with your hands, good signing. This is important because it tells your baby that you're paying attention and that what they're doing is important and that they're on the right track. And this is a good response to use actually any time that your baby's making a sign that you don't recognize. So let's talk a little bit about why babies approximate signs the way they do. First of all, when babies are born, the right and left side of the brain are not fully connected and aren't hardwired to work in symphony together. So, for example, if something is right here, the baby will reach for it with this hand. If it's there, the baby will reach for it with the other hand, but they won't reach across like this. So when signing, a sign like music, for example, which both hands cross over the midpoint, might be done like this, or just one-handed like this. Or a sign like bear, would be done like this, instead of like this. Or the baby might just do it one-handed like this. Another reason babies will simplify signs and modify signs is because each sign has three components. The hand shape, let's use cow for an example, the movement, this twisting forward, and the location on the temple. Babies aren't able to combine all three of those elements together. This is why childproof lids and latches um, require you to perform more than one action at a time, like push down and turn or squeeze and lift up, because it's very difficult for babies to coordinate those things. So a sign like cow, like this, might be done like this. They leave out the hand shape, but they get the location right and they do some kind of movement. Or they might get the hand shape, but they might just kind of wave it up and down out here in space instead of anchoring it to their head. When your baby's approximating a sign like cow, but they're doing it like this or like this, try to follow your baby's gaze and see what they're looking at. At the same time, try to think about signs you've used with your baby that are done on the head, such as maybe a bunny or horse or, of course, cow. And then follow your baby's gaze and see what they're looking at. And that'll often give you a clue as to which thing that they're signing. Another thing your baby may do is they might modify the fine motor movement of a sign like bird to use a larger motor movement like this, opening and closing the whole hand. Or they might turn it around and do it like this because that's the perspective they have on the sign when they see you signing it to them. And lastly, babies will often go through a stage where they use the same sign for everything. Oftentimes this sign will be the sign for more or for milk. Now, the reason for this, well, there's a couple of reasons. One reason is that when your baby does the sign for milk, they get the milk and they think, wow, this is like magic. I did this with my hand and I got what I wanted. Maybe that'll just work for everything. Another reason is that that first sign, milk, 
is the only tool they have in their toolbox. It's like when you maybe moved into your first apartment and you didn't have a toolbox yet, and so you had to use a butter knife to uh, screw in screws or turn it around and use the back to hammer in nails. And then maybe someone brings you a housewarming present of a toolbox, and yay, you have the right tools for the right job. You can use the hammer for the nails, and you can use a screwdriver for the screws. So once your baby gets some more tools or signs in his repertoire, he can use the right tool for the right job. Another sign we're going to talk about today is the sign for pain. The sign for pain is done by tapping your index fingers together like this. Or you might see a version sometimes where it's a twisting motion like this. It means the same thing, just a regional difference. To teach your baby the sign for pain, simply wait for a time when your baby is in pain somehow. Maybe they're teething. Oh, ow! And sign the sign near where it hurts. Oh, did your teeth hurt? Oh, poor baby, that hurts. Or maybe they bonk their head. Ow! Oh, that really hurts! Or maybe Daddy comes home and he has a cut on his finger with a Band-Aid. And you could sign pain next to Daddy's finger. Oh, poor Daddy, he hurt his finger at work. Let's give it a kiss. So notice you do the sign for pain near the side of the pain. The reason for this is so that your baby will also learn to localize the sign for pain when they need to tell you that something hurts. For example, let's say you go to your baby in the middle of the night because they're crying and crying, and you feed them and you change them and you do everything you can think of to comfort them, but they're still crying, and you wonder if maybe something's hurting them. If they could sign pain and they had an earache, for example, they could do it near their ear, or they could do it down near their tummy, and then you'd be able to take the right action to solve the problem. You might find, for example, that something sharp is poking them inside their sleeper. Maybe their tab of their diaper is folded over and poking them, or maybe there's a little piece of a tag uh, from the brand new pajamas. Another useful way you can use the pain sign is to teach your baby about things that can hurt them. For example, don't touch mommy's coffee. It's hot. It can hurt you. Or if you're out for a walk and you see some cactus plants or something thorny, you can pretend to poke yourself. Oh, ouch! Oh, don't touch those plants. They hurt. Those are spiky plants. Now it's time to learn some bath time signs. Remember how I said that mealtime is the perfect time for signing because your baby's a captive audience? Well, bath time's also the perfect time for signing because the parent's a captive audience. You can't leave your baby alone in the bathtub, so you might as well sit there and enjoy some special signing time together. Most babies really enjoy bath time, so it's a really great motivating time to use some signs. You can play in the bath and sign ducky, you can sign splash splash, you can sign water, you can also sign wash, and shampoo with your baby in the tub. Most babies really enjoy the bath, so it's a perfect time to use some signs that are very motivating to your baby. You can sign things like splash and ducky, as well as shampoo and wash. You can also sign about the different temperatures. For example, run the water and let your baby put their hand under it and feel the cold water. And then make it warm and sign warm. One sign that you might not think of teaching your baby, but is something that babies are very interested in, is the sign for shave. Babies love to watch Daddy shaving his face, especially if he uses the method that includes lots of white fluffy shaving cream. Daddy looks so funny with his face all white. When my son Aiden was a toddler, my husband used to let Aiden shave his own face by covering it with shaving cream and then shaving it off with the smooth end of an old nail brush. We had a little mirror attached to the bathtub wall with a suction cup so my son could see what he was doing. The sign for shave is a great example of a sign that might not be of any practical use for your baby, but it's really fun and motivating. So now it's time to learn our bath time signs. Bath, like scrubbing up and down. Brush hair. Brush teeth. Clean, like clean to wash something, the verb. Clean like clean, the adjective, wiping the slate clean. Bubbles, the bubbles float up and pop. Cold, cold, you need to look really cold when you do this one. Comb, like combing your hair with your fingers. Dirty, ew, dirty, it's like you're in dirt up to your neck. Duck, quack, 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 quack. Hot, hot. It's like you're spitting out the hot food and throwing it on the floor. Hurt or pain, ow. Shampoo, shave. Sit, like two little legs sitting down. 
Soap. Lathering soap in the palm of your hand. Splash. 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 Warm. It's like a puff of warm breath coming out of your mouth on a cold day. Warm. Watcher. The American Sign Language W taps the chin. Watcher. Watcher. Where? Where is it? Is it over there? Is it over there? Can't quite put my finger on it. Where? So, bath time is a really fun time to play with toys in the tub, or you can play with water in another container, like this here. One fun thing to do is to play with dollies. Here's a doll, or you could call it a baby. And you could use the signs off and on. Let's take her diaper off. Let's take it off. She's gonna go in the bath. The baby's in the water. Should we wash her? <gasps> wash, 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 wash the baby. Do we need some shampoo? Let's do shampoo. Shampoo. Water. Does the baby like to splash, splash? Splash! <laughs> okay, she's all done with her bath. Let's dry her off with a towel. That's one we didn't sign before, huh? Towel, towel. This baby is all clean, all clean. You can also play with other toys in the water to practice the signs for wet and dry. We're gonna do those when we do our diaper changing week. But this is a preview, wet and dry. I have a little fish and a little frog here, and your baby just can play in a basin of water. And then we can talk about how wet they are. This fish is all wet. Or of course, there's the trusty rubber ducky. That's always fun. He likes to go in the water. He likes to go swimming. So those are all some fun things that you can do in the tub with your baby. I'm sure you can think of plenty more. And of course, you can also do these things in the pool. So speaking of cleaning and washing things, the only time to use those signs isn't during bath time. You could also play a game of cleaning something else. For example, maybe you could play cleaning house. Get your baby in a good habit early. So you could sign vacuum. You could say, the floor is all dirty. Let's clean it up with the vacuum. Or you could take a cloth and say, we need to wash this book. This book is all dirty. Let's wash it. So there's lots of fun little ways you can include the signs for cleaning and washing things. Another fun thing you can do to teach your baby the sign for cold is to give your baby these cold teethers that you put in the fridge. Babies love these cold teethers. They love to mouth them or you can put it on your baby and sign, woo, that's cold. So those are a lot of fun. Um, or you can give your baby some ice cream and that's a real motivating one to get them to sign cold. There are plenty of books that you can use to reinforce bath time concepts, but I really like the books that you can take in the bath. These little plastic ones float and they're waterproof. This one, Barnyard Bath, and this other one, Bath Time, are both by Sandra Boynton and published by Workman Publishing. Let's read a couple of pages from Barnyard Bath. It's bath time! Is your washcloth nice and wet? Let's get going, ready, set! Wash the duck. Wash the cow. Wash the piggy. You know how. Today, we're going to learn the song Bath Time from the Songs for Little Hands Music CD and Activity Guide that I co-created with my sister, award-winning singer and songwriter Susan Z. Turn on the hot, turn on the cold, water in the bathtub, water in the bathtub. Turn on the hot, turn on the cold, 
make the water just right. Dirt on my face, dirt on my hands, let's get a washin', let's get a washin'. Dirt on my face, dirt on my hands, washing the dirt away. Play in the bath, play in the bath, time for my ducky, time for my ducky. Play in the bath, play in the bath, bath time so much fun. All done! Yay! This week, try to get in the habit of using bath time as prime signing time. I'm sure you'll find it makes bath time even more fun for you and your baby. This concludes Lesson 3 in the Baby Sign Language Basics online learning series. Thanks for watching!